Tale of Despero is different from more recent animation in that it's uh, a slightly darker story than most animated films are. And the style, the production design, and the style with which the production design was done, where it has a very painterly feel to it in relation to, it's almost as if you're, you're part of a Flemish painting. The basic idea was to move away from the um, classical 3D shiny plastic look that uh, you could see on uh, other projects. And uh, doing that was, uh, being able to do that was quite an achievement. And it was very uh, exciting to be involved from the start uh, of this project and uh, to do something different. Uh, it was a first for, uh, for Framestore, the first feature animation project. And uh, it's almost a first uh, in, uh, in the whole industry uh, in terms of getting something like that. Uh, so to achieve the look, uh, we had to, to get a very soft and diffuse look uh, for the characters and, uh, and the sets. Um, so it, it meant that uh, we had to find solutions to, to move away from the classical uh, CG uh, look. And um, for the fur, uh, we had to find solutions to actually uh, get something uh, very stylized uh, and very different from uh, what you could see in uh, other CG projects. The biggest challenges on the Tale of Despero were taking the, the 2D animatic that we were given by Universal and the production design artwork and turning it into a 3D environment that was fully textured and modeled, fully lit with effects, um, with animation, and rendering it out to deliver a 90-minute film. At any given time, we had at least at least two times the amount of the length of the film online because of the number of variations and versions and iterations we were doing to produce different looks and testing different colors and different textures on the film. So we turned to one of our production partners that we've been working with for quite a long time, Infotrend, to help us to increase our disk space and our storage space so that we would be able to have that much information online to be able to deliver the film and render the film out before, before it was actually due to be released in the cinemas. We, uh, we initially thought that we would need uh, 50 terabytes to, uh, to complete the movie. Um, in the end, we used 200 terabytes. Um, and using a clustered storage rather than, than, than having it fully tiered meant that we could keep it all live. You know, if you use tiered storage, where you have primary storage, secondary, and then tape, um, you're constantly moving data between the different parts of storage. Whereas with a clustered solution, we could get the bandwidth and performance out of the cluster to allow us to have an enormous amount of, of primary storage. Doing Despero, uh, we doubled the amount of cores we're using on the render farm, uh, quadrupled the amount of data that we were producing. Um, we had 250 artists working on it, 6,000 cores in the render farm, and 200 terabytes of storage, uh, which had to be smooth and accessible for the final stages of the movie. We've used Infotrend Raid Arrays for 10 years. Uh, started with um, Walking with Dinosaurs. We did the pilot of that using Infotrend storage and we've uh, been using it um, since, really. I think the film is stunningly beautiful um, and something that Framestore will, have some, will, will be able to be very proud of for a very long time to come.